Oh boy. Good morning. Uh, welcome back. I hope everyone had a really good time at yesterday's business summit. And uh, today we're meeting uh, kind of economic development and economic diversification boards um, kind of for our monthly meeting. Um, and last time we had a super big all hands meeting for four hours um, with like 30 people. Um, I think there was some conversation about uh, resetting or dissolving or something along those lines of the economic development or economic diversification boards. And I think as we're going to kind of start the planning process rather than exploding those now, just having to meet jointly for the foreseeable future as we figure out kind of what the right fit is um, in the long run. So that's kind of what we're doing today. And I think we're gonna to try to continue to do that. Um, let me pull up the agenda so we're looking at the right thing. Okay, um, so I guess we'll welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Does anybody have any conflicts of interest, disclosures, or ex parte communication? Um, any citizens to be heard? Um, and then let's just go right into introductions. Um, we have some new faces today in here. Um, let's just do a quick round. I'm August Grant, Economic Development Director for Grant County. Let's do it in the room first, Ben. Here we go. Ben Alter, uh, Grant County Economic Development Specialist. Um, Stuart Clayson, uh, Regional Growth Program. Patrick Mullen, also with the Regional Growth Program at the Association of Parents. Carl Cohen, World Community Assistance Corporation. Awesome. All right, online. Uh, Biga, do you want to go first? Biga Metzner, Moab Timonic Valley Film Commission with Grand County Economic Development. And pick your pick the next person to go. Or Brandon, you. I should go next. I'm with um, Intrepid Potash. I'm a citizen member. Hi there, this is Gabriel Whitesack of the Grand County Commission. Sorry, I can't be there in person today. I've got an 11 o'clock I'm going to have to step out for, but um, thanks everyone for being here. Uh, Rob Walker, citizen member. Emily Campbell, uh, Grand County Planning Commission. Jade Powell with the Southeast Utah Association of Governments and Economic Development District. I think that's everybody. Did I miss anyone? Nope. Okay. So um, I guess it's just to kind of do some quick context. Um, I think the goal for today is to try to build off of the momentum from the business summit and some of the learnings from it. Uh, so I have some time to kind of review and chat about how that went um, and then uh, get into a kind of a proposal for the first step of kind of the planning process um, for our department and then go over priorities for the year and kind of make a game plan to execute. But before we get into that, um, we have Carol Cohen here from the Rural Community Assistance Corporation. Um, Z, who was scheduled to present, um, cannot make it um, since her best. But we've been working with Carol for several months, maybe six months or so, even more, um, to try to figure out if there's a way for our organizations to partner um, to provide some uh, programming for business development, really. Uh, some things have changed and kind of want to bring her in so she can see all the bigger picture of what we're doing on today and so that y'all 
and get an understanding of what value they could provide to our community. Um, I don't know if you want to kind of come up closer here. Do you have anything that you want to present digitally or uh, share a little bit about who we are? Um, do you, well, I guess, do folks know who RCAC is? I can do a quick, quick overview if that would be helpful. Yeah, that'd be great. Why don't you come over here and sit here a little closer to, to the, the owl? So and I'll just trade your spots. Oh, yeah. I haven't had enough coffee. Um, <laughs> well, hi everyone. I'm Carol Cohen with Rural Community Assistance Corporation, RCAC. So I guess I'll look at you there. Um, and I'm the assistant director within our community environmental services program. And I lead our Building Rural Economy program. And so RCAC has been around for years. We have been around for over 43 years. Uh, we've been working in Utah probably for 20 and in um, Grand County, Moab for some time as well. Many of you probably know that we work with PASU, the Housing Authority of Southeastern Utah, community re rebuilds in administering the self-help housing program. So that's one of our strongest housing programs and um, Utah is definitely a national leader in that and the work here has been really innovative, especially with straw bale housing. Um, we also do water and wastewater. Uh, we were working right now in Castle Valley and also in Thompson Springs with um, helping them conduct a rate study. And the program that I work in helps communities look at economic development priorities and how to move those to implementation, develop action plans around them, and then bring resources to the table to help make them reality. We also have a program that specifically focuses on small businesses and entrepreneurship. Um, and that's specifically one of the things that Ben and August and I have been chatting back and forth the last several months about um, that this might be a good opportunity to do some of that work or to bring it to Grand County and offer it to small businesses um, here. So we have developed curriculum and um, we are nimble enough in modifying it so that it works with each community because communities are all different. Um, but the, most rural communities have the same challenges with uh, small businesses and staffing and all the things that you know were discussed yesterday too. Um, we also have a very healthy loan fund. Um, we have done PPP lending, paycheck protected program lending um, all over the country actually um, during the last few rounds. And we offer some COVID relief products to help small businesses. So we're able to bring quite a few things to bear to help communities. And um, that's why I'm here today is to just just to see what is a, a good fit and how we can work alongside you. That was a lot, so hopefully that made sense. Yeah, I think we just uh, plug back into that when. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess we'll talk about this when we get to the review and discussion of the 2022 priorities, but I'm thinking at the very starting point, Plug-in number one is um, we have 30 grand set aside for rural county grant funding for entrepreneurial programming. And we think that RCAC would be a really good partner to, to execute that programming. Um, the requirements would be that we'd have to get that SBDC position filled at USU Moab um, in order to be the contact point and the conduit for that programming. So that's the first. And then um, the other thing that I'm gonna talk about here shortly is that they have kind of a community economic development planning module that we could plug into the planning process. So we'll get to that shortly. Um, while everybody's here, any any kind of thoughts on the Canyonlands Business Summit and how all that went? Um, pros and cons, good things, bad things. Uh, we don't have to spend a ton of time, but I figured it was yesterday. I'd love to hear people's thoughts. Um, I'll, I'll take it off. Go for it, Rob. Uh, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, I've been to two others, um, 2020, 2019 and 2020. Um, 2019 was much smaller. 2020 
felt similar ish in size, but this did feel um, bigger in terms of attendees. And um, the things I noticed, I guess, was the kind of age range of people there was more was certainly wider than the past. Um, a lot more younger people um, I noticed this time. And um, also the the uh, the two tracks was really nice. Um, and sometimes in the past, I remember, I mean, in 2020, uh, you know, there were more kind of canned presentations, which I thought were not great. Um, or, or in general, canned presentations, let me just say, I, I think are usually not great um, relative to panel discussions and Q&A. And then I think there was more, uh, I liked all the extra kind of like mingling time. Um, I feel like I got to talk to a lot of people. It can be frustrating sometimes when you're at a conference and presentation after presentation happens with like very little breaks. And I mean, the food was great. Um, so yeah, I think it was awesome. I think my only feedback would be, um, I feel like there were certain parts where I wanted more audience Q&A and less like the questions that people had sent in ahead of time, just kind of like in terms of energy level of the room, like, you know, I think would have been maybe a little higher in moments to, to do that. But I think it was great. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Anyone else online or in the real world here? Have any good thoughts or takeaways? If the main takeaway is that it was good, then I'm happy with that. Well, I'm to follow up. It's just, I heard a little bit about it was great to hear and discuss all the issues, and it really wish that our commissioners were there and our city council was there to actually be able to know the theater and So it's kind of, I don't know, sweetly was maybe a variety of things or maybe a takeaway that said, hey guys, this is, these are some of the really interesting discussions that came out of this. And, and yeah. But that was that was the thing I heard from the people. Where is you know where is where are the people that can do this more? Yeah, and I mean we had some people there obviously. You know, Jason was there and, yeah. and Gabe was there. Um, I think Mary was there at one point, but yeah, kind of a uh, having more people with decision making power to hear what's being said. So they're moving forward. I will say one other thing that kind of the last thing that we're planning to do is that we had someone who's their specialty is kind of doing graphic supporting. So, um, you know, if you can imagine someone on the side of the room where they're kind of basically taking visual notes of the summit that can be really nicely consumed after the fact. It's not a meeting minutes or recording. So, but they're also participating in the summit. So what they're gonna do is we're working with them to kind of create that um, after the fact based on the notes that they've taken and that our staff has taken. So that there can be an opportunity for kind of in-person follow-up, something like um, you know having basically you know a bigger poster board with with the outcomes visually graphically, and that there could be a follow-up maybe with elected leaders um, or just leadership in general to say, you know, okay, we had this, we have some time to think about it. We're coming back. Here are the main takeaways. How can we turn this into action? Either way, we're planning to display those somewhere or do some kind of programming with it, but. Um, we have to introduce that person. Another, another thought, on August, just for like, just an idea maybe for next year. Like, I wasn't sure what tabling was and maybe like in, in maybe you could have a separate thing. I mean, it just was like rough networking or whatever open thing. Um, could have been like for certain people, you could offer them like sort of like uh, um, everybody could, could um, there could have been like more one-on-one -on -one meetings that were set up that was more formal. Like, so say like each person gets like five people or something that they pick, they want to meet with. And then if like those same people pick them kind of like a Tinder for networking right there, you know? So that could have been cool or like smaller groups, things to have like more focused discussions and areas. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Just, just a thought for you. I like that idea. We did have a kind of a focused networking breakout at the mark. Um, that was really great. But obviously, that was only for the people that showed up for that session. Uh, but I like that idea. Um, I do want to be aware of the time of the people that do have to leave at 11. It's at least two in here and one online. Um, so I'm going to move on and um, 
we're going to send out a survey to all participants so they'll get more of this information. But um, so I just kind of want to just dive right in to what I've been thinking about for um, you know, this this planning process here. Um, let me pull that up really quickly. Uh, this is kind of coming from a place of trying to create a structure, um, kind of a living uh, structure rather than, because um, I don't think we quite know exactly what we want to put into an RFP, to put into a master plan. Um, and wanting to kind of, I think one of the outcomes of the last conversation was looking for kind of a smaller, more targeted group to, to guide some of the decision making um, for our department because we have so many kind of inputs. And so this is kind of what I came up with as a starting point. Um, so basically creating this um, executive board, whether that's a formal arrangement um, or not, I'm not totally sure. Um, but the intention would be, it'd be myself, um, it'd be Lacey from the chamber, the chair of um, the economic development slash economic diversification boards. Currently, there's not a chair. Um, a, uh, the trial council chair, which is Jenny Gleason, and then the commission representatives that work on those boards. So at the moment, that's Mary and Gabe. And then I would think that we'd add either Kevin, who has a tourism policy focus, or Jacques, who has a, a responsible recreation, outdoor recreation focus. And then um, the strategic development director, uh, Chris Baird, because uh, he ultimately has the final say on all of this stuff. And then we want to plug in kind of our regional planning um, with Jade up at the AOG and Patrick and Stewart um, with the Utah Association of Counties Regional Growth Team. And, and so the goal of that um, would be to create basically this body to help guide our department um, to execute the priorities for 2022. Um, and then that the boards that are already existing um, would be very much focused on um, breaking down the actual programs that we're developing and you know, creating task forces and helping to execute those programs. Um, the goal would be to um, help support the development of our 2023 budget request, um, which is due September of this year and to uh, start to determine the scope of the master plan. So at the moment that would include, you know, interviewing relevant stakeholders, doing community engagement, establishing goals for our department um, and uh, long range measurable objectives as well as setting benchmarks. And then setting the stage for accountability and clear evaluation. So creating best practices for internal data tracking, um, to support reporting of department activities, and then creating a publicly available 24 seven dashboard so that all parties can transparently evaluate achievement goals. And then the other part that this kind of new board would help out with is to assist in the identification and selection of contracted subject matter experts to support the development of a master plan and execution of priorities for this year as needed. So that would be bringing on um, someone to help kind of facilitate an actual planning process, um, someone with a tourism background to help us uh, determine what is the vision and future of the tourism services of our department, as well as the kind of diversification and EDO side of our house, and then um, someone to make sure that we're incorporating DEI best practices into all of that um, as we're going forward. So all that being said, it's kind of the first step um, to start a planning process. And we'd execute, basically I see it as two tracks. We'd execute everything that we've said we're gonna do for this year. And um, this kind of board would help us um, sort out what are, really, what are really are we asking for in the longer term and what are we asking for in the next year budget process. Um, this is a first draft. Uh, what do people think? Open, open conversation. Does this feel appropriate? Does this feel on closer to the money that needs some tweaks? Does this feel totally off? 
नीचे है Everybody happy with this? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think for me, um, that's where, where this all comes in. So the interviewing kind of relevant stakeholders and confirming community engagement is where the, the private sector comes in. Um, we still will have private sector representation on the boards that currently exist that are helping to kind of prioritize and execute the. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. At the moment, for this kind of just high level board, um, it is very much just helping me and my, our department kind of figure out next steps. So having Lacey on there is, is being involved with everything we've been doing, I think makes a lot of sense. And this is, you know, we still have the chair of each of the economic development and travel council board that are plugging in um, to this process. But I think the purpose here is to get a smaller, more focused group to start figuring out, okay, really, what do we need to get? What do we need to do here? Right. Well, these other boards still function as a function. Yeah. This is just creation of the executive board that helps. Kind of coordinate, really. Yeah, so it's not a replacement. Right. No, so yeah, so the only thing that would happen. And the reason I haven't done it yet is because I don't know what it quite looks like in the future, but basically the economic development and diversification bodies, um, rather than kind of blowing them up and creating a new one uh, at the moment, I think it's part of the outcome of the planning process would be uh, evaluating the organizational structure of what we have currently, looking at each of the three boards and figuring out a better way. Is there a better way or is it kind of how we've set up? Does that work? Um, and then for the, but in the meantime, moving them structured as is, continuing the, the, the work that they're already starting to work on. And this would just kind of be a new coordinating body. Uh, Yeah, at some level, it's definitely true. I, I, I think there's, I, I was kind of conflicted on whether to call us an executive board or a master planning task force, because I think initially the creation of this was, let's get a smaller group of people who are going to be very laser focused on what we want to get out of the planning process. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a really good point. Um, so that's something I was trying to do. Okay. Yeah. I'm really saying it's, it's kind of difficult to hear people in the room. Do you think you just speak up a little more? Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, what was kind of mentioned there was, it seems like, you know, wasn't what I originally kind of was talking about is streamlining things. If I'm now, it seems like I'm proposing to make things more complicated um, and adding kind of another layer of, of advisory board. Um, and I think the original intention was to create kind of a task force specifically focused on the planning process, um, which implies you know, a very specific focus rather than a, an ongoing uh, process. Yeah, it applies to start date. Yeah. And I think that's very helpful to do. Because this group did it, it works great. People like it, this is great, it's over. Yeah. Hey, August, we can't quite hear the members in the room. Okay. Uh, you can hear me pretty clearly though, yeah? You come in clear. Okay, cool. 
Can we bring our care? Yeah, maybe you can kind of come a little closer, possibly. We're just summarize what you yeah, said. Yeah, if you could just give a quick summary, that'd be helpful. Sure. The main point was that rather than thinking of this as an executive board, thinking of it through the framework of a kind of a task force um, with a kind of a start end date to deliver a plan, uh, basically a plan for for a uh, master plan, it's kind of a planning the plan process, basically, um, and that this board would be leading the development of that process. And then once that process is complete, then um, we carry out the recommendations of that process, but the board doesn't need the consistent perpetuity. Does that change the role of the un, of the other two boards, or is there a way to consolidate them? I mean, once you have a plan in place of priorities, then it becomes an action committee to implement them. And I wonder if you need them to be divided to make that successful. Hmm. Like having a follow up of the kind of master plan task force um, as an action committee that's separate from the existing boards. Is that what you're saying? Well, if I understand what's being proposed, um, it's we need to have a sort of strategic direction for what we want to achieve, how we're defining success in this economic development space as a county. And then once we have that plan in place, that master plan, we divide and conquer to actually achieve those goals. And I guess what I want to make sure I'm understanding that correctly first. And if I am, it seems like maybe the whole structure of the boards could be revisited, consolidated to be more effective in achieving those goals, which I actually think this is a great direction to say, like, this is what we think success looks like. Here's, we're going to measure it. And here's the timeline we're going to give and then say, who, okay, then here's the body that's going to facilitate that going forward. Yeah, I think that's the goal. And then the existing bodies are focused on, in the meantime, co coordinating and executing the priorities that we've set into motion for this, this budget year. Um, and then the chair of those bodies is plugged into this planning process and kind of is the liaison in that way. I mean, obviously, I'm involved in all of it, but uh, that's how I'm thinking of it. That there's, a pl there's a planning process and then there's an executing process and they're running in parallel. Um, but they're somewhat distinct. Building the plane while we're flying it at some level. Um, this has just been out of my brain. So any other any other thoughts on this? Um, don't have a planning background. Again, um, if this feels like this is going in the right direction, uh, or really, if this feels like it's going in the wrong direction, keep looking at it. Or any other input. Okay. Um, I'm thinking uh, what I what I'm proposing to do from this point is basically kind of propose this structure and this concept with these with this input to the, the travel council board we're meeting this afternoon, and then uh, kind of bring it to um, County administration and, and say, hey, this is kind of what we're thinking for this process. Does this feel appropriate um, on the money or or not? Uh, so I just wanted to give you all's feedback first before we go do that. August, um, I know you scrolled through this once, but I'd be curious if you scroll down. Does this have any objectives or measurements? It's it's just the who. Okay. So this is this is the part that I'm maybe a little bit more interested in nailing down, which is making sure that we are, you know, I guess moving forward with intent and setting clear goals within a specific timeline, designating how we are going to dashboard and track the success of those initiatives. Like to me, that's what's been missing uh, and has led to some of the churn that we've experienced, at least on the board that I'm on so far, of not having that like precise set of goals and objectives. So if that's the outcome of this, then I'm strongly, strongly behind it because it's something the county desperately needs. Yep, that's very much the goal. I mean, this is the outcome of the, the, the economic development master plan priority uh, that went to the budget. So um, yeah, that, I think that's definitely the goal. And then the, we'd be spending the money on kind of subject matter experts to help guide that process. Um, internally and say, are we on the money? Do you have the right things in place? Um, 
for this year. And then if there, if there needs to be more money allocated to different things to execute um, the plan, then we put that in the budget request for next year. And then these are these are estimates in terms of dollar amounts that based off of what we have in the budget at this point. I'm thinking it might be useful. The next kind of thing I wanted to go over is kind of list of priorities um, and kind of what our department is going to work on and kind of solicit feedback and input um, and changes from the last meeting. And I think that's probably a more sensitive conversation that might help inform how this is all going to work together. Does that feel okay to kind of move on to the next next section here? Can everybody see the spreadsheet on our screen? Okay. Yep. Okay, so this is, we went over this last time, um, but I, I tried to make some kind of adjustments based off of um, the conversation that happened last time, the conversation that's happened in, in coming weeks or in, 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 the, in the following weeks. Um, and so starting with the, the rural county grant uh, funding priorities, um, kind of making some draft adjustments um, to reflect kind of the things that can be maybe spent out of the diversification budget versus what can be spent out of the rural county grant budget. Um, and so one of the one of the biggest things that kind of was identified was um, increasing the amount of money going towards workforce housing support and kind of daycare support, um, and so increasing those amounts um, substantially here. Um, this kind of business support grant because we're going to launch the diversification grant program, thinking that that would be um, a better place for that priority. Um, Kind of zeroing out that line and spending that money on other things. Um, let me start with the ones I'm zeroing out. The kind of support for women owned and minority businesses, making that a carve out of the diversification grant programs and other grant programs that we're doing for direct business support. Um, for economic development outreach, there's a marketing line in the diversification budget. For education grants um, and the remote working outreach, thinking that that can come into the workforce development lines for the diversification um, budget, leaving the VISTA contribution in there um, as we anticipate hiring a VISTA, and then leaving um, you know the money dedicated to diversity, equity, and inclusion kind of plug into that planning process. And then um, leaving the amount for the Canyon Lines Business Summit, depending on the final accounting of what we actually spent and how much money we made. Um, 30 grand for the entrepreneurship program. And that would be kind of what we'd be using as a starting point to, to match and work with Carol at RCAC for their um, Start, Grow, Revive entrepreneurship program. And then these two lines for uh, workforce housing and daycare. Um, let me just kind of go over the diversification budget really quick and then we'll come back to this one if that's okay. Um, just because I think that makes it clear. So then we have the 65,000 still allocated for the economic development master plan, which is then going to hire these subject matter experts and facilitators to help the planning process. Um, the $500,000 um, local business expansion grant program workforce development program, um, diversification program marketing. So that goes towards all kinds of, that could be community engagement for the master plan. That could be um, getting people uh, to show up to, to events where the grant programs are being launched. And then um, 
this line to start getting the small business development center fully staffed here in Moab. Um, I'm gonna go to this other kind of priority document that's kind of a plan of action. And then once we've reviewed that, maybe we can kind of open it up for conversation. So for our office, starting to prioritize um, the planning process based off of this draft proposal that I just showed to you all, um, starting conversations, um, not starting conversations, starting the kind of finalization conversations um, with small business development center staff for Grand County to make sure that we place that position. Uh, finalizing the design for the diversification grant program, getting it approved and launched. Working with Carol at RCAC to identify a peer pathway for partnership. Um, whether that's with their kind of start, grow, revive entrepreneurship program or uh, working through their rock program, which is kind of a community economic development priority setting program, which I think could plug into our planning process. And examining kind of this reprioritization of rural county grant. And I think having folks on, on this board, um, I think we would probably want to probably put together a task force to really hammer down how do we build that kind of daycare um, support and build up program and then um, and then the housing support. And maybe maybe those numbers are too small for both of those things and they just need to be rolled into one priority. Um, and then building up the workforce development line, which is 100,000. Um, currently, uh, there's ideas to fund, um, help support the School of Science program that Science Mob is running, um, develop trade apprenticeships, um, and support the VISTA program with kind of a food and rent um, uh, support, basically. And then kind of at the bottom are kind of running the final financials on the seat on the Canyon Lands Business Summit and doing the follow-up for Rural County Grant Part B. So that is um, good to go and starts happening. I've given way too much to all of you all at the same time, um, but this is kind of at some level, the plan of action for our department at this point, um, for what we're working on, on the execution side, on the planning side. And um, I would love to hear where people want to get engaged um, or just any kind of input in general to everything I've dumped on you here. I think it would be helpful for meeting to meet that we have these benchmarks in terms of the timeline. Of yeah. What we think they're going to happen. Where we are on those, what ones have gotten started, what ones are moving ahead, what ones are doing better than the others, where there's issues in each meeting that needs maybe some help if we've got it to give them. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, um, I'm good with anything that has to do with uh, businesses, business planning putting out money to businesses in any of those kinds of issues. Uh, so, you know, if it's the daycare business plan that we get funded to move that forward and keep that going, and that needs some nudging, uh, some advice, and that's the kind of stuff I can do. Right. Happy to do that. Uh, I guess one thing I'm just looking at on the list there around kind of rural grant, rural county grant program. Yeah. And pieces around daycare. I would just know, you know, one of the things we're seeing kind of the valuable role that AOPs can play across the state is in that competitive part of the grant. Right? Mm -hmm. So in some cases, you're getting your allocation as grant and then there's this regional competitiveness. I would wonder if there's similar efforts taking place in some of the other counties in the Southeast region where you might sort of find kind of that position forward for child care or something. Just as you know, sort of the task force and different things, I think it'd be interesting to have the regional bits kind of going. We've seen that be successful when we get other kind of regions. Then I know we're going to have to hit the road here in a minute, but I, I would just say, as someone who was new to Business Summit and new to this board, I think it's really interesting kind of what you guys are doing. And we just love the help from the UX side of the regional road program. So this is Fascinating. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Y'all y'all have to get out of here now. Yeah. Okay. Well, child care calls three and a half hours away.
Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're predetermining our future so our significant others don't, uh, don't get us too, too much of a dog. Yeah, but we're here to help whatever you need. Say, thanks so much. And, and I hope it goes well with your other board this afternoon. And I think, uh, I think the leadership in the community recognizes that. I, I, I would just say what we have recognized doing the work that we've been doing, doing is tourism is a vital aspect of rural communities across the state. And you guys are aware of that, very, you're acutely aware of that. Finding a pathway towards diversification, it, it, and that means different things in different places where you have large agglomerations of humans, like you have on the ones that front, diversification is a lot easier. Um, kind of understanding that. Um, the child care component is huge. I think that's a universal issue that you guys are feeling that others are. And then kind of, it was a big deal to have the, the new dot uh, or down here because I think, I don't think people are aware of how bad it gets on one night in terms of just congestion. Yeah. And it kind of figuring out how, how modes of transportation are playing with each other and how they actually kind of create a bounding of what's possible. So hopefully we can help with that. Great. Thank you guys. James of Art, if you want to see a real problem. What's that? Come down here, James of Art. Oh, no. we're ready for that. We had the achievements. So. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Travel safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Any, uh, any other, thanks, thanks, y'all. Any other kind of feedback from folks that we have here? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I can just chime in, August, on uh, child care briefly. Uh, with you know my involvement with the Moab Community Child Care, um, just a little update on that. We're about to make an offer for our first director, which is exciting. Um, we've had a few uh, kind of uh, read. You know, a lot of them have their own life issues, as many people have with child care and things. That, um, anyways, I'm hoping this one will work. I'm optimistic. Uh, just some thoughts in terms of like how to support uh, child care. Um, you know, one thing that could be fun and, and is you could kind of use that money to incentivize or help seed um, individuals who want to run home daycares. Uh, home daycares are a pretty efficient, um, you know, way to um, expand the amount of slots that are open for kids. There's a lot less regulations on those than opening a center. And, uh, you know, um, so the money could go sort of like, I think, off the top of my head in two ways. One would be kind of an incentive to, you know, uh, say, you know, if you open a center and you're open this many months, yada, 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 you get $5,000 or something like that. Um, I think that would go a long way because people open these things because they want to make a little extra money. They're not huge businesses, but um, I think that could go a long way once they get started, then they kind of feel obligated to keep going because the families, they have interactions with them and the relationships. Um, so convincing them to kind of get off the ground, uh, you know, um, and then the other one could be subsidizing the cost to certain families. Um, it depends on, uh, you know, uh, I don't know exactly what they all would be charging, but I don't think that'd be as important, but you could also do something for um, you know, subsidizing for like undocumented families. I don't know if that could can happen through uh, county money, but those would just be my additional ideas because, you know, the child care center that we're doing, you know, we'll have some things we can spend money on to increase our supply right away, but ultimately we just kind of need staff, you know. So one thing that I'm wondering if I've heard a little bit lately is even in the child care facilities. So for example, my assistant in is unable to take her daughter because her daughter is very young and is not loving the, the situation. She mm -hmm. cries a lot, but it's just not working out for them. And so she's looking for a solution of who can I pay to come to my house, uh, which you have to pay a little bit more for. But I'm wondering if there's some kind of program that we, you know, subsidy that we can give our um, people for sort of nanny type positions mm. that, you know, isn't maybe the traditional, here's a whole care center that you've got to figure out how to staff and, and you know, everyone's getting here together, but is there money for those more individualized 
do you kind of, I, I, I kind of didn't hear, all, I think I heard that. Are you suggesting kind of like a, I mean, like a, you have a, you know, a, a few essentially, you know, babysitters on call? Yeah, it's a nanny, nanny business model. Yeah, or wants, babysitter business model. Who wants to be a nanny and can we subsidize that in some way, you know, because then you're kind of taking away from their ability to make money elsewhere. So you have to pay quite a bit of money. And so, for example, with this situation, she's like, I don't have the money to pay her a whole salary and my whole salary kind of thing. Right. But is there a way to use those situations for yeah. to make those situations? Yeah. I, I kind of didn't hear all of that exactly. It's August, someone closer to the microphone can summarize that. Yeah, basically creating some level of support, whether it's matching grant or, or subsidizing um, salary for in order to increase the availability and supply of, of the nanny um, type workforce, basically. Does that sound about right? Yeah. It's yeah. also a business opportunity for someone to start a business with that nanny model. Um, it, you know, I could see more of a subsidizing of that, the role of the county supporting right, that business development. Um, totally. The babysitters love the adults have. <laughs> totally. Uh, I'd say, yeah, I mean, you can look at the numbers, but yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of different things we could do and if we want to try to maximize the number of slots because there's 100 kids born every year, roughly, in Moab. Um, and there's, you know, I, I don't have the exact number how many slots there are. It's way less than that. Um, certainly for infants, there's very few. Um, but yeah, I think, I think a few thousand dollars, you know, would really incentivize an individual who might be on the fence about it to say, maybe I will do a home child care thing. Um, I think we get dozens of spots that way. So just a thought, but I'm happy to, we can, it sounds like August at this point, you just kind of want some rough feedback. And so I support increasing the amount to childcare for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess there's, there's uh, um, at some level, what, I, what I'm hoping to do today is you know, really figure out if, if, if this, if these two bodies that are the way that I'm thinking about it, basically, is that until a planning process is complete, that these two bodies will meet jointly. Um, and the role of these two bodies will be um, to specifically take on the stuff on, on this list and break down more or less um, the, the to-dos um, and get specific people working on specific things in conjunction with our department. And that, that would be the focus of these two bodies um, kind of for the balance of the year until kind of a planning process completes and it's really clear, okay, yeah, let's keep these two bodies and maybe they work separately or getting a clear goal of, of, of how they're gonna work together in the long term. Um, Can you tell me then, because the, I don't know, the, the diversity, development, yeah. development yeah. is kind of guided, is, is that guided by state code, right? Um, I'm just making yes. sure that we're still. It's specifically created to support the Royal County Grant Program and the, the statutory yeah. obligations of that program. So I think I think what you're, what you're getting at is a good point, which is that Something I'm noticing today, and I don't know if this is just because I'm exhausted from the business summit, but <laughs> like I, I, I think it seems like there's a little bit of an unclear direction of, of kind of how these two, uh, the people on the economic development and on the economic diversification body are going to kind of specifically work together with their department to execute um, kind of our goals. Um, and that the goal would be to ensure that we're with the state ordinances that cover rural county grants, and that we're also kind of on the diversification side, building out new programs um, with the TRT money dedicated to diversification. Yeah. I, think, I think one of the things you have to consider to think yeah. about is maybe this committee that was created to do that rural money, yeah. 
maybe that's it, right? And that's all. And uh, and so it just stays in business. Needs once a quarter to get updates on how that might expand, right? right? And what the success is, and to be there for the next uh, application that needs to go in, right? And provide that kind of help. Um, it may be a problem to take this group and say, we want to expand your role yeah. to even more than that. That's helpful. Is that a good thing? Or we have too much going on and too many other committees that that doesn't make any sense. It might make more sense to take this committee and really box it in mm -hmm. so that it keeps your work down. Yeah. And, uh, but, or expand it so it can take some workload from someplace else. That's the thing you got to say. Yeah, no, I think you're, you're right. Yeah, sure. yeah. okay, it's a really good thought. Any other kind of gen general thoughts here from the people here? I guess something else I'm noticing is it seems like, and maybe this is just due to kind of ad hoc scheduling, um, because we tried to get something on the on the calendar for day after the business summit, but um, you know, noticing that we're not having kind of full participation of really either board. Um, there's a couple of housekeeping things we need to do uh, to get, you know, we need to get a chair for each board, hopefully, ideally the same person. We need to get some board positions renewed to the county process. Um, I, I'm wondering if, you know, a lack of participation is due to either random scheduling, and I just need to stick to a schedule and we actually meet as, as proposed, um, or if there feels like a lack of, of mode, like clear goals and direction and motivation uh, as a result of kind of ambiguous asks from our department or kind of just the direction of these boards. I think sometimes the larger uh, thing you have, the less people feel the need to be a part of it. And I, I, let's face it, you're new, there's been a big change. Yeah. Uh, it's hard for you to get on top of everything. Uh, consistent scheduling helps, okay? no question. But we have it all on our calendars every month, two months, whatever it is. But that'll come. Yeah. And I think you can shake that out. In the meantime, you have to be a little more personalized, sending an email with different board members about stuff. Right. And just to gauge their commitment and involvement and ask for that as you yeah. move forward. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Third party here. But um, it might be helpful just to get some folks to dedicate like committee work around specific pieces of this that they're most dialed into. Yeah. And kind of divide and conquer on that. I think that that's that's I'm really liking that that process. Um and and to your point, maybe keeping the groups focused on the ind individual um programs they're working on, economic development staying in the Royal County Grant, and then deputizing and committing or what's in there, and then having the diversification body work on the money coming out of the diversification line of CRT um, and then committeeing and deputizing in that way. And that way it's kind of separated and focused and people feel like there's a more narrow scope of work that they're working on. And to keep that as a starting point for execution of 2022 priorities. That seems reasonable, at least path of least resistance and most um, clear out. And then making clear schedules to it, which we can definitely do. Emily, you got your thinking hands on. Oh, um, no, I'm just trying to catch up. I wasn't able to come to the last meeting, so I realized I don't have full context for this list. Um, like, what are we not doing that's been discussed as a priority? And is it are we not doing it because we think we need that master planning? uh first or is it a decision not to prioritize some things some of the things we've talked about are you know specifically housing i know we have the grant outstanding looking at investing in potentially you know existing businesses but that seems like there's a lot of runway there i'm just wondering like you know from your perspective as the as the person leading economic development right now in the county 
why these, why not other things? And do you have the right people in the room to help you get to these goals? Like, do we need to rethink that? And I don't want to spin out too far, but that's just, that's where my head is at, trying to understand the path forward. You're, you're totally on the money. Um, what has happened since I've taken the director role is that um, I think the first four months of that, basically September to December, has been catch up and kind of prioritizing a lot of the tourism stuff just because I had zero knowledge on that mm -hmm. side of things and just getting our organization up to speed and restructuring it. And as a result, Ben basically being the only person really available to work on the non-tourism lines of business in our office, he ended up having to take on all of the business summit planning and prep. Um, and so basically for all of January and February, he's only been doing business summit. Um, and so I feel now at a point where we've, we've developed a really great plan of action on the tourism side. And I'm, I'm pretty much ready to just hand that off to Melissa Robert and the travel council to, to do um, and taking my time off of that and redirecting my focus here. That's certainly what county uh, direction would like me to be doing. Um, so that being said, I, I think it's just the lack of time and resources internally, why this hasn't kind of really moved forward all that much. Um, and my internal thinking was once the business summit's done, we can actually get to work. <laughs> so um, in terms of what's on here, um, based off of, this is based off of what was in the budget. So looking mm -hmm. at this document, which is based off of what we decided to prioritize through some of our kind of strategic sessions last year. And um, in terms of changing this around based off of the conversation last month, which was, um, and today, and, and spending some time looking at both budgets, the diversification budget and the rural county grant budget and saying, what's duplicative? What can be rolled into kind of a, a, a line of programming and, and budget? Um, on this side or that side, and then prioritizing what, what we've been hearing in the community. Um, so that's kind of where we're at at this point in terms of the amount of money assigned to what and what capability. And then that, that brought kind of this document as a, um, this document as basically a work plan mm -hmm. uh, and relatively prioritized. Um, and that this is stuff that Ben and I are going to coordinate and then would love to bring kind of specific people on or kind of committee slash task force it within the existing bodies. Yeah. That's how I'm thinking about structuring it. And then our work will be to bring the both bodies back up to full kind of membership and participation and uh, chairmanship by the kind of the next month. And uh, have a little bit more organization going on here. Thanks, that's helpful. And I know you guys have had your hands full, and um, you know have kept the train on the rails with uh, enormous grace. I, the the thing that I'm hungry to see here is what what this does for us. I I, I want us to get to the point. I hopeful that we can get to the point that each of these priorities has some sort of quantitative measurement that we can be revisiting as boards and assessing where we are placing our efforts, where we're placing our money and resources against these goals. Maybe that's step one for each of these smaller working groups. Um, but that I think is gonna be the ultimate tool that's gonna make all of this effort successful. Um, Cause right now, you know, as we look back to the last several months of effort, um, I don't know that we have a, sense of what have we accomplished, what is remained to be accomplished, is what we have been doing effective and so on. So maybe that's part of that broader uh, planning process, but that's the one thing I'd assert is as soon as we can get to some sort of, you know, dashboarding quantitative analysis of these different initiatives, I think it will serve everybody involved uh, and the county as a whole. You're totally on the money. And I think this is where I got, where I'm trying, this is really the question I'm trying to solve is that, we're, we have these programs that we said we're going to start. We've put money associated with them. But we also haven't done the strategic planning with the county community, all of the private sector, et cetera, stakeholders to figure out really what are the metrics we're trying to bump up and boost. And 
uh, track and try to do that while trying to kind of start these programs at the same time. So I think, I think that's why I'm getting in this kind of weird place of how do we do planning and execution at the same time and do long range planning and short range planning at the same time. And so trying to create a separate task force focused on that long range that's involved in these short term conversations about, you know, if it's childcare, for example, we, we see it's a priority. It's been established for at least this year, having, you know, a, a single conversation about that in a smaller task force that's this is how much money we have. What do we, what can we do with that? What is the best way to do that? And what are the numbers associated? Maybe it's simple as just adding five nannies to the workforce, you know, keeping keep that kind of number. And then as we're aware of those smaller short-term goals that we're setting in this granular task force style process, separately, we're doing bigger picture, long range planning, um, with county commissioners, leadership, community, and business stakeholders throughout the year um, that is kind of looking towards that five-year horizon. And uh, that the, the kind of planning task force is working on that side of things. Uh, so it's hard yeah. to do those in dual track. Um, so I, I think this is great. This is just my sort of analytical mind. I just press for, you know, as soon as we can start to get some number out there just as a baseline, uh, and make the data around that more visible, I think better off we are. So, you know, the example of add five nannies to the workplace, how many do we currently have? How many do we think we need? Can we set a goal of five? And then did we reach that goal within the period of time of six months of effort or so? The sooner we can build those feedback loops in, I think the more effective this will be on top of the work we've already done, which is really great here. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah no, I think she's absolutely right. No. One of the hard parts is separating the difference between activity metrics yeah. and result metrics. Right. And some activity metrics do or act as a precursor to result metrics. A lot of them don't. And so it's a matter of defining what we want to measure. Mm -hmm. So if it's how many infants we have in tribal child care, that we sort of pulled off the street, right? And put people back to work. Well, those are real results. Yeah. Um, you know, having a facility with nobody in it is an activity. Hopefully it will lead to results. But I think we just have to structure around our programs and make sure that we can gather the data that's necessary um, to, uh, to do that. But it all starts at a very small level. And yep. it's all I mean, economic development is a contact sport. It's not a spectator sport. And it's really hard for governments to get into that yep. because they're spectators. Okay. And but it's really a roll up your sleeves, and get out of the bricks and shovels and start going. Mm -hmm. And it's it's hard to make that transition. And if we can do that, and one of the reasons it's hard is because it happens one job at a time. And, and so, especially in, in this kind of environment. And so one job, five jobs, 10 jobs. If you start thinking on a bigger scale and that that is not success, you're in trouble, right? right? And it's a matter of setting people priorities to say, okay, I understand that this is success. This is really quality success as opposed to the hoopla of activity measures. Yeah. So we work in August, can I jump in? John Gunther here. Uh, and I'm sorry, I have not been in the circle here, and I might be saying things completely out of sequence here. Where are we with the dashboard between the indicators projects? It's kind of feeding off what this one fellow was just talking about, and and actually measuring trends and data, the critical data, which will vary, of course, with our county from other jurisdictions. There are lots of good models out there. Uh, and I guess the other question I have is more high level. Uh, are we or you, are you tying into the county commission strategic plan, which is out for draft right now, and has a lot of economic development indicators and uh, high level references in it already. Uh, and how, if you are linking to that, how are you linking that to that strategically? Yeah, I'm, I, I think I've been doing more thinking about process 
than uh, connecting all that. This is, I mean, connecting with you, John, is something that's been on my list for a while on this. Um, and apologies that I didn't, wasn't able to do that before today. But maybe that's a really big outcome is making sure that any kind of master planning or planning for our department is plugged in and is, is married to the larger master plan, the general plan and implementation plan for the, the county is already working on. Uh, and you know, apologies for not being- No, no, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. I'm asking how, you, how this ex exercise is connecting strategically to the county draft strategic plan, not, not the general plan, but the county strategic plan. And which is strategic, general plan is a good one too, of course. Uh, but I think we got a pretty healthy looking economic development section. And, and then the other question is the dashboard on indicators, which seems to me to be one of the areas that you would want to look, focus on uh, in parallel to all the great work you're doing already, August. I'm not trying to undermine that. <laughs> so uh, I didn't see that in the, I didn't, and maybe I missed it. I, I asked Ben about this. I didn't see it in the funding for this year. Uh, and it's one of those things that doesn't cost a lot to get something going. Yeah, no, I think so. To both of your points, then I'll make sure Carol can get some input here. Um, is that I, I, the intention is for it to plug in, but uh, I think I haven't figured out how that works. Really, is the honest answer for the strategic plan. And then, so that's a conversation I think we should plan to have. And, and so, August, can I just? interrupt for just a second because i thought that there was funding for um developing the master plan am i mistaken you're, you're totally right we had to put 65 grand to the side for that for the master plan and so i would think that the master plan would just include the effort of i mean you in a master planning document you would have um or in that entire effort you would have within that the indicators and that would parlay into having the the website post the indicators and that would be updated regularly there would be a kind of a, a way a spelled out um, strategy within the master plan of okay these are our indicators we've identified them and here's how often we're gonna here's how we're gonna monitor and update them um but i i would just think that that would be all all looped in together and that would and the master plan would also be um speaking to the Grand County's strategic plan and it would all tie together. So I think there is funding if that's if I'm right about that. Yeah, yes, you are right in that there is funding for it. I think the way the way that I've been thinking about the planning process is that for this year, and maybe this is totally off, but that for this year we would be more creating um, kind of a, a task force to identify really what the needs for a plan are and bringing in, spending some of that money on subject matter experts to advise on that. Um, and so that's, this 65K is currently broken up in this way. Um, that's obviously draft and can be changed to ensure that we are having kind of a dashboard in there. I was kind of thinking of it as the dashboard being an outcome of, um, you know, bring all of the people together, bring all the people into the room and figuring out what do we need and, and, and the dashboard being an outcome that I would put into the 2023 budget um, and execute in uh, next year's kind of cycle. You know, August, we can take this offline too if you want to, because there's different models out there. You know, what you're hitting on is a good point that uh, what I've seen developed is like five clusters within the community indicators area, people, demographics, economic development, environmental, transportation, all of, all of those major clusters, health is a big one too. And there's lots of good data out there. Uh, and then those clusters focusing on what priorities, because there's a lot of data that you'd want to leave off and a lot you want to include depending on the county. So we can always work through that together with you. Uh, not that we are a key part of this, but planning can help with a lot of the models for that. And, and what that looks like, uh, we are going to have an internal review again of the strategic plan. We had a really good session the last time and we're gonna have one of those within a couple of weeks here. So we'll plug you into that too. Okay, so I think what, what it sounds like is that there's three main outcomes. Uh, all right, Claire, Claire, you wanna kind of, you got no, you Okay, I think the three main things for me and for us to keep in mind going forward here are 
A, taking this draft proposal that we've been talking about today to kind of John and Elisa and reviewing the strategic plan and making sure that that makes sense for the larger county planning effort and changing it if it needs to be changed. And then B is getting each of the board's economic development and diversification um, with clear schedules and clear tasks um, based off of kind of what we've started um, in this priority list. Um, does that feel like a clear takeaway from today's meeting um, for everyone here? Sounds good. Sorry, but I think that because at the chamber, I, I, I feel you because it's like, you've got this board and you've got these ideas and we're gonna do all this thing. Then everybody leaves and you're left. Right. And make it happen. Yeah, right? me and Ben. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and so, so I, I'm feeling you there. And maybe what we really need to do is as boards is step up and say, okay, this is how I personally am going to move this needle forward. Um, and then, because I mean, ultimately, we are under some state codes with this diversification money to get this money spent. So yeah. as much as I understand and love the planning of all of this, I think we're getting really caught up in the, the weeds and kind of the, the, it's not really moving our needle forward. And what we need to focus on is getting the money spent. And how can we as board members of whatever board we are um, help you do that? Totally. And that's what I think we should focus on. Yes, and I think the, I think we will work with the planning and zoning department to make sure that the planning process that we're thinking through, like kind of taking that off these boards, basically, and having this board, these boards focusing on execution of, of this year's priorities, task forcing and committee and executing. And then I think the really big thing is I just need to get a, a good chair um, that is on both of them. Having a really great chair for the travel council and getting has been really supportive and it's been wonderful. So I, I will plan to kind of reassess the structure and uh, membership and make sure that we have good for the next kind of session uh, that we're built up and ready to go to do that. But just so you know, like if you want to give me an assignment, here it is. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lacey. Um, Anyone else? This feels like kind of reaching somewhat of a concluding point for today, at least. Um, there was no, there's no action items for the day. You know, I'm not even sure we had a quorum. This is more of just getting everyone back together um, so that we can have this conversation and figure out exactly what we need to do with all this. Uh, so this <laughs> this conversation, although it went all over the place, is kind of what I was hoping to have happen. Um, You've got the plan, what Lacey just said. Yeah. About spending money, right? Yeah. Doing that with what needs to get there. Yep. And cherry pick what we can get out the door. Totally. And you know, talk to, to members or coordinate, find out what the county's doing so you don't go off the reservation. Or, yeah. And then to say, we got this, 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 and assign some metrics to them. Yep. And move ahead. Yeah. I, I think either directly or through some kind. Totally. Yep, I, I agree. Uh, I'm wondering, since we do have Carol here, who in, in some ways is going to be really good partnership in that way, as basically a contractor in some way, to do the entrepreneurial kind of business development side of things. Um, if we can get some some thoughts on, because basically next steps for working with work RCAC are getting the SPDC position in place as soon as possible. That $100,000 is already allocated. I will be setting up a meeting with, um, let me go. This is, I think this is, let me go to this document. That's uh, my internal priority for the next. Um, setting up this meeting with the folks at USU to try to get an agreement in place to make sure that that position is filled as soon as possible. And at the latest for the April 1st opening of the USU Lab campus, which will then allow. Um, us to memorialize the relationship with RCAC to get the Start Grow Revive entrepreneurial programming going through that person. Yeah. Um, and that seems like a clear cut 
got to move ahead with that. Does that feel like a good set of kind of things to prioritize for blush um, with folks here? So you don't, you're not involved in that pirate process. I don't think I would be. Right. Um, I would imagine that I'd be consulted at some level. We've been putting up, we would put a lot of skin in the game. Yeah, I was gonna say, you put money up. I, I, I would imagine that they would, I, it would be open and transparent and inclusive. Um, and we would be involved, but. Yeah. Uh, it can help with just like what we're helping other communities do when they hire someone in a similar position. Yeah. We get assist with job descriptions and just general feedback. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I would think that SBDC would have basically leading that process because yeah. it's going to be there, right? That's, that's one. I mean, I think that that reason is why originally I think the county had some ideas of bringing this position into the county if we're going to fund it, mm -hmm. but there's just logistical constraints in our office. I can't manage that person or position or have space for it. So mm -hmm. there's already an SPD no, system. SPDC is already allocated for it. Yeah. And USU runs the SPDC program, so they've got space allocated for it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Basically, our role is they, they probably could fill a part time position. We're trying to make it full time, yeah. paid, benefited, high quality enough to recruit the right person who's going to be here in the long term, and then work synergistically with their office to carry us and for us now to fill the priorities. And that takes the technical business assistance off our plate as an office to an institution that already does that for us. Yeah, with that partnership, then we can use them yeah. to help. Anybody to give grant money to to make sure that exactly. you, know, you know a business plan in place, we do all those kind of things. Well, and, and this was monitor and follow up. This, this came up during the business summit when I was talking about these new grant programs, just kind of getting feedback from the public. And um, you know, as a requirement for uh, doing the grant or being awarded the grant, that if you're awarded, you have to go. Through. Oh, absolutely. You know, the SBDC. Oh, yeah. 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 Or maybe even program. as a subject, as a, as, a, as a condition of application. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Loan programs that I'm involved in. Going out money for loan programs, for example. One of the things we've always used is the SBDC to either before we loan the money, to say, you got to go there, you got to get your act together, you got to get back. Mm -hmm. Get a recommendation from them, or if we do loan them money, they have to report it. Totally and do those kinds of things, and uh, they're set up or can be set up to do that, especially if they're a partner and you're putting them up. Yeah, they'll, they'll custom craft a program around your person to, to make it work. Absolutely, you've just got to figure out how you're going to handle the rest of Southeast of Utah, you know, so that you are paying. Because you're going to get hit where I can't pay for Southeastern Utah. I pay for Grand Canyon. Right, which I don't think is the problem because Megan McFall, who's based in Blanding, is this is San Juan and County, San Juan and Grand director now. Yeah. So we're they've bifurcated the Carbon Emory and San Grand Grand and San Juan sections of the FBDC program. So she is now where the that is based off of, and we've worked with her tremendously throughout this summit too. So she would be basically the manager for that position right. in Glanding, but this person would be a Grand County Grand only yeah. position. That's great. And I mean, she's currently managing a lot of the Grand County. Right. At one point, we talked about somebody managing and helping us with that um, $500 grant or $500,000 grant and how to mm -hmm. set up the, you know, the guidelines and the stipulations and that whole thing are going to be. So where we're at there, and that's also, that's the other like number one priority. So I think SPDC, RCAC focus, and then getting the diversification grant up and running. We already have a pretty good scope that we've worked with these bodies in the past. In the past, yes, I mean, that was a lot of last fall. So that's this document that we've already kind of developed several page. Right. Doc
Hi, all. We're, we're trying to log back on. Just give us a moment. there to see what comes out of that and you know that was one thing i was just going to add when we do community facilitation we really help the community think about what are those things they value as success because we all come to the table with a different idea of what that thing looks like yeah. but within the community setting you know you can start to see the priorities by the to talk to determine how does each community determine success with economic development and we we try to think about it we really embrace like a really holistic model like um you know how does this affect the water how does this affect you know natural resources how does this affect individuals how does this affect infrastructure so every decision that you make as a community in terms of what you want to bring in in terms of economic development it forces you to think through those different lenses like am i causing any harm so um it's just it's just a wider way of looking at success and outcomes associated with that. So anyway, just wanted to throw that in there. I think that would be really great to weave into your when you talk about the master planning process and gathering the community in. Is that the rock Um yeah, a lot of our curriculum on recharger community economy is focused on that and that thinking through that. We call them eight different eight forms of wealth or assets within the community. Yeah. Just a baseline. Yeah. Um, well, the meeting dropped, and we think lost some people online. Um, any kind of fault, la like last follow up comments from the, the folks who are here online? Uh, I think we'll probably wrap this up, and uh, Ben and I will regroup and start making. Uh, next steps and follow-ups and we'll make sure that that's clear to everybody who's participated today. Okay, I'm going to take the silence from the online community. Uh, satisfaction of the inclusion of this. Thank you all. Thanks for letting me sit in. Of course.